as biology and medicine emerge as the queen of the sciences in this century. USC is better positioned than anyone else to lead this change. We're getting recognition internationally. We're getting great scientists coming and we've got some really good new major donors who believe in what we're doing and that's incredibly inspiring. We approach our work every day like we work in a startup and we try to do exciting things and creative things. And most importantly, we put the patient first, always. And the drug. USC and its location in central Los Angeles offers a really unique opportunity. We have a population that's really a microcosm of the population of the world. There are over a million visits at the medical center per year when you put together the county hospital and Keck Medical Center. I was at Harvard Medical School for 19 years and I realized that I want to truly contribute to the society for more public health problem in direct way. That's why I chose a Keck Medical School. What attracted me to USC was the potential to be innovative and collaborative with a whole host of disciplines across the breadth of USC. I have four or five active research programs in cardiology and network medicine with the Viterbi School of Engineering, with the Marshall School of Business, with the USC Athletic Department, with the USC School of Cinematic Arts. USC is probably one of the only places in the world where you can do that kind of work. We've been able to put together one of the great engineers, the great physicists, myself and the rest of the team to bring on a new approach to cancer. The reason that I came to USC is because it's very exciting to be in a world-class university setting where we can meet with other outstanding scientists or leaders in their field to create innovative treatments in the context of clinical trials. You cannot, with any chemotherapy, kill the cancer stem cell. So now we have a drug which differentiates out these cells and now we are able to treat them very successfully. We have started this drug in the clinic, and everything we were hoping to see, we do see. About 1% of the population are naturally completely resistant to HIV because they have a little genetic quirk. So we're trying to recreate that in people based on gene therapy and stem cell therapy, and we hope that in this way, we'll allow patients to sort of cure themselves and control their virus. The possibilities of regenerative medicine at this time are limitless. Regenerative medicine is translating our knowledge of how our body systems are built, repaired, regenerated, and then applying that knowledge to new therapies. Researchers within the center here, and more broadly across USC, are interested in how different parts of the body can be repaired and regenerated. One of the wonderful things about uh, pediatrics is its interface with developmental biology. We get to see children really from birth to adulthood. As many as one in five kids suffer abdominal pain at some point during their life. They have uh, poor abilities to regenerate tissue, and so we're looking at how improving the body's ability to regenerate can be influenced in the future. The baby boomer generation brings a huge population of people who are coming into a risk factor age for Alzheimer's disease. More than 30% of people have a chance to develop the disease. And we're seeing that more and more. So, so it's a global world pandemic. In Israel, we've done the largest study of colon cancer in the world that allows us to identify not only the genes that predispose to cancer, but what are the environmental and lifestyle factors that can influence risk. Cancer is a global disease. And by taking a global approach to cancer, we can really recognize that global health is public health for the planet. The university made a huge bet on the medical school that it will be a resource and a generator of academic funds, NIH grants, that I think as, as part of the institution will take the university to the next level. We received um, the largest NIH grant that USC has ever received, a $57 million grant to support the development of a translational science institute. That institute is really designed to doing high quality research with the intent on making specific impacts, in this case, on the health of urban populations. Someone with advanced heart failure, their mortality, their chance of being alive in six months is about 50%. The chance of being alive at six months with one of these pumps is 90% or greater. 
we're really on the cutting edge of what this technology has to offer. We are now at the cusp of changing the paradigm of treatment for prostate cancer, where we can identify the area of cancer and just obliterate that maintaining the rest of the gland intact, this treatment could actually be delivered in an outpatient environment. We're developing an artificial retina to restore sight to patients who've been blind for 10, 20, 30, 50 years. The concept is to use these electronics with the camera to jumpstart the blind eye. We use this iPhone case that has two electrodes that allows you to touch the iPhone case and get a spontaneous continuous EKG. One participant in our study traveled to Mumbai on business, was talking to a Nigerian, allowed him to touch the phone. The next night, I'm looking at these transmissions in LA, and I diagnose a pretty malignant cardiac condition in this gentleman. The guy was in the hospital within 12 hours. There are many health problems that transcend borders. The easy examples of the infectious diseases, which can spread you know, as fast as airplanes travel. My laboratory has an expertise in infectious disease. That's why I have a number of visiting scientists in my lab from Korea and China and India. Here at USC, we're educating the next generation. There's specific issues of the 21st century that we must address as a global community. I did my doctorate in epigenetics research in Tasmania, and I met Dr. Jones in Europe, and uh, I really wanted to come to his lab and learn from the the master of epigenetics. Here at USC, Peter Jones has discovered drugs that can turn this orange box back into a blue box, leading to the cure of cancer. We've directly impacted people's lives. To meet someone in the car park who is a patient here, who's been treated with this drug, that experience is, is, is very precious. It's great to be able to see someone walk into a clinic who was literally two seconds away from being in a funeral and have them walk in and shake your hand or give you a hug and say, you know, thank you for saving my life. I recently operated on a young lady with a tumor that frequently the surgery causes paralysis of the face. She got an excellent result and about every six months I get a picture of her. Um, the last one I got, she was skydiving. These patients really want to keep doing all of the things that they used to do. They want to chase grandchildren. They want to explore and travel. They want to do things that they've never done before, and they don't plan on slowing down a bit. We actually have the opportunity to change people's lives. Most of these people have had disabling arthritis for many years. They've often failed conservative therapy. And when you do these surgeries, they can walk the next day after the operation. Now is the time that we really need to be investing in research for prevention and for cure. CAC Medicine is a great investment. What you get with us is an incredible attitude of innovation and hard work, and we'll be able to deliver what we promise because we're dedicated to do that, and we need to continue to realize the dream that is the best medical center in the country. We are just getting started. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah.